support this podcast at patreon.com forward slash Chris Carl Photography Podcast. website that you have no formal training as a photographer you just kind of bought a camera and experimented what was it that made you want to buy a camera and experiment in the first place well years ago you said probably 99 2000 i was dating a model and uh this is sort of the beginning of the the dot-com craze and uh she was in playboy she had her own website and that was when that was starting to get big with models at that time. So she constantly was trying to update the content. And she was like, you know, can you take some pictures of me? And so I bought a digital camera. It wasn't anything good. I think it was just, honestly, I think it was some Sony with it took floppy disks on the side. Oh my God. And uh, I started taking, yeah, 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 I started taking videos and photos of her. And I really didn't know anything about it. Um, so I did that probably for a year or two, not really getting into it, but getting a little bit better and better. And I've always been like a very artistic person. So I kind of, I, I know what looks good and what doesn't look good. And, um, and as it progressed, I realized that, Hey, I'm, maybe I, I, I have a knack for this. So I bought a better camera and, um, back then this, you know, there wasn't a YouTube and all this stuff back then. So, I just would sort of look at pictures and try to study where the light was coming from and um, try to copy it. And then I I would go to some photo shoots with her and I'd watch photographers and uh, write down names of the equipment when they weren't looking or watch what they were doing. And, uh, you know, um, basically thinking to myself, I could do this a lot better. (laughs) And uh, so that's what I did. I, I, I I bought a better camera. And uh, I really got serious about experimenting, and eventually, I, I quit my job at the time and decided to uh, to do this. I mean, you're based in California, and uh, at this point, were you actually based in LA then? I was. I moved to LA. I have a funny story. I moved to LA. So before I was a photographer, I had another shitty job. I used to run gentlemen's clubs <laughs> for many years, right. uh, probably seven years, and so I worked. To Northern California, and I worked in Las Vegas. And then a club hired me in LA. And I was dating that girl at the time. We both wanted to move to LA. So uh, the club moved me to LA to, to run this club. So I did that for a couple of years. And I was just so burned out by that time that I was just looking kind of to do something else. I hated the hours and, you know, it wasn't creative for me. So um, I had enough money saved where I could, you know, sort of just quit my job and try to do photography. I had a couple people interested in, you know, hiring me for little jobs here and there. And, um, I just kind of took a chance. Um, you know, I think being very unhappy at work helped. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I just took a chance. It was, um, you know, it was, I never, I never trained with anyone. I never, I didn't even know, you know, how the functions of the camera work. I just started messing around with it. But places generally are oversaturated with pretty much any trade now. Like, I guess, sort of since the the YouTube generations come in, maybe I'm looking at this a bit differently, but was it not terrifying considering the fact that you're in such a saturated market for people to want to get involved in media in all facets that you would quit your job and go into something that was possibly that oversaturated? The thought never crossed my mind. Back then, this was 2002, 2003. I never thought that there was too many people or it was oversaturated in this market because, you know, there was no social media back then. And, uh, you know, people who became photographers, it wasn't like today where anybody could pick up a digital camera and start shooting pictures, including a model. And they're decent because the camera does all the work for you now. And the iPhones are just as good as a lot of the cameras. So, you know, back then, you know, you had to actually stand out, among, you know, amongst, you know, other people in order to get a job back then. And I really didn't, I really didn't have any idea of what the photography world was like. I was sort of in my zone of shooting 
sexy girl photos. And that was pretty much it. And, uh, I kind of, I was kind of in a little bit of a bubble and it wasn't until years later where, you know, I, I ended up getting a job that changed my life. And then, you know, I started to expand my, my interests a little bit. So it's kind of like an ignorance is bliss situation where it really was. Yeah. If, if you'd have known how pressurized it is, do you think it would have put you off from the beginning? Yeah, it would have intimidated me uh, because I never thought I was any good. I never, I, I was really surprised when people said, you know, hey, I want to hire you for this. And I was like, shit, I have no idea. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, listen, I am the perfect example of fake it till you make it. And that's what I did. I literally got, I remember the first big job that I got was for a, a big website at the time. And it was all day and it was photos and they gave me my first photo assistant and I didn't know how to set up packs. I didn't know how to adjust the lighting. I freaking winged everything and everyone just thought I knew what I was doing because I was just starting to just, yeah, I just jumped in it. So, um, you know, once I got some confidence after that day, it sort of became easier and easier to fake it. And by faking it, I kind of taught myself how to do it in my own way. So yeah, interesting, I guess. I mean, talking about some of the publications that you've worked for, like Treats Magazine, Maxim, um, you've done campaigns for guests, which is, I have to say, like shooting for guests is, I just think that's the coolest thing. I don't know why, but I always love their campaigns. I think they're really cool. What pressures come with shooting publications that are that well known? And obviously so many people are, are vying for that job that you're doing. Yeah. I mean, the, I think, there was more pressure when I was younger. You know, I, I don't know. I've really been, I've only been doing this job, I guess. Now, I guess you can say now I've been, I've been a professional photographer probably since 07, 08. Anything before mm-hmm. that I was still messing around. Um, you know, I believe there was more pressure to stand out in my eyes back then. But people might think it's the exact opposite nowadays um, because it's so oversaturated, like you said. <clears throat> um, nowadays, I don't feel pressure at all because I'm, I'm very confident in what I do. Um, like I, I never have any issues on set where I get nervous anymore uh, because if it doesn't work, I just move on and try something else. Um, I don't know. I'm quite comfortable. Uh, I think more than anything, the pressure was to, it was really hard back then to get in those magazines. It was really hard. It was really hard to find the contacts and the right people and for them to buy pictures from you as opposed to giving them away for free and making money. It was, it's a really hard balance. So I, you know, I would say it's, it was easier in some ways back then, but In a lot of ways, it's easier now if you work really freaking hard to, you know, do your job now because of there's a lot more people now doing it, but there's a lot more opportunity now. On shoots for, you know, publications like Treats Magazine, who's leading the sort of the direction of the shoot? Is it something where you're given a brief and it's interpretable where you can kind of put your own stamp on it? Or is there a creative director there that kind of has to put blinders on you so that you go in the right direction? The short answer is it's, it's me. It's mostly all me. 99.9% of the time. You know, I, I, you know, obviously I was known for many, many years. I, I, I shot for Playboy for 10 years. That was my first big job. And that's really the job that sort of changed my life is shooting for that magazine. I started at the very, very bottom at the end of 06. And then my contract, and then at the last three years of my contract, I was the senior photographer. At Playboy, I was like the top, I was the head guy. So, and that ended in December 2016. So, throughout the, those years, I was sort of, um, I, you know, talking about, you know, trying to stand out and trying to really make a name for yourself in that. It's very competitive in that company, uh, with the other photographers. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I saw a lack of uh, a lack of creativity and a lack of um, effort in other photographers. So I would sort of take it into my own hands, even at the lower level shoots, to 
become the creative director and become, you know, the stylist and become, uh, you know, location manager and all those things. And, you know, I sort of introduced a new way of shooting to Playboy. And, you know, the older guys started to follow suit a little bit after me. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I rattled a lot of cages there. In fact, I would get calls from people I knew that are, that were close to people high up in the company saying, Hey, the word is you're making too many waves. You need to calm down a little bit because <laughs> people, are, people are getting pissed. You know, for me, normally I would have done that. And for some reason I decided to, you know, push a little harder and it ended up working out for me. And, um, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know why I did it. It wasn't like me to do that. Normally I would have like backed down a little bit and said, you know, I'm just going to not going to create too many waves. I'm just going to kick back and cruise control for, for a while. But, you know, I saw that the company needed a change and needed to be, need something fresh. And I felt like I could give that to them and with my creative direction. And, uh, ultimately it did. And then when I got to be senior, senior photographer, there was a creative director there. And, you know, I could say this now, but honestly, he came up with concepts, him and I together, but, you know, I, I basically did most of the shoots. I mean, I creative directed most of the shoots. It was my idea, my location ideas, my setup ideas. And every once in a while he would chime in, but you know, they sort of let me run with it because I was good at it and they didn't have to watch over me like the photographers. So now was it 2020? It's uh, you know, four years later. Uh, my last street shoot was in October. And yeah, I, I creative directed 100% of it as I do most of my jobs now. So that's a, that's a long answer. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant. Um, when it comes to sort of stamping your own creativity and your own personality into your images, especially where you impart, I, I find your images have a lot of energy and a lot of expression, which more and more I think sort of post-millennium uh, fashion photography is going towards very sterile, very clean, very unemotive. I don't want to be rude, but sometimes boring images yeah. of of just kind of personality lacking faceless people that obviously are fantastic looking, but you don't feel anything when you look at the images. Whereas um, you're one of the few that are still doing stuff that feels like it has energy and emotion. But considering you've been doing this for so long and you obviously work with very talented people, how do you get everybody into that sort of excited to be at work and want to actually do the best they can as opposed to just kind of cookie cutter it? That's a good question. You know, uh, I appreciate, first of all, I appreciate the comment because I, you know, I, I've had a few people tell me that they love the energy in the photos. And, um, I guess I didn't realize I was keeping that alive. And that's quite a compliment if you can, you know, convey that to the viewer in, in my images. You know, one thing I can say is it's never boring working for me. Um, <laughs> you can ask anyone who's worked for me. Some people work for me for over 10 years. Some of my people in my crew. And, uh, <laughs> I always really do my best to, make my models and my crew have a great time. And uh, because I realized something early on and, you know, I used to shoot a, you know, years ago, I used to shoot a lot of, uh, I would, I'd go around, Playboy would send me around the country and do these casting calls and try to find, you know, models for uh, fresh, you know, try to find playmates and models for Playboy. So we go all around the world, do these big casting calls. There'd be like 500 girls to a cattle call on the weekend. And then we would go off for a couple of days and take the top, you know, 20 and shoot them to see if they were worthy of uh, being a playboy. And a lot of them, I would say 80%, 70% were very shy. They've never been in front of the camera, very insecure. And I noticed when I started, I noticed there's a difference. There's a lot of photographers that never keep, that don't communicate with models. A lot of older guys, you know, they were actually kind of mean to them and rude to them. And I, I just felt that was the wrong thing to do. Like, how do you expect to get something good out of someone that feels like shit on set? So I started showing, I would, I would find an amazing photo. And I was like, okay, come here. I want you to take a break. Come look at this for a second. And I would show her in the monitor or show her in the camera. I said, no, look at this photo. This is you. Like, can, this looks amazing. 
And all of a sudden, most of the time, they'd be like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Oh my God, I can't believe this. This is amazing. Oh my God, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And when you have someone that feels that way about their images on set, like your results are going to be 10 times better. Like they're just going to be 10 times better. So I've just sort of developed a rapport with people on set, whether in front of camera or next to me on camera. It makes everybody kind of feel good working there. And, um, and people that don't, don't end up usually working for me, that don't end up working for me anymore. So, I mean, uh, it, it just, it makes such a difference to have good vibes on set. It really does. And when you have a happy model or a happy subject, like your, your photos are going to be 10 times better. Now I've shot girls from, that are foreign that have no freaking personality at all. And they're just like duds in, in real life who barely speaking where have no personality. But all of a sudden you get in front of the camera and they're robots and they're a machine and they're amazing. And they've also had the exact opposite. Some girls are so motivated, such a great attitude. And they come on set and they get in front of the camera and they're forward. So it goes both ways. But in my opinion and in my experience, you know, having people that are really happy to be there and happy to be in front of the camera is, you know, the key to getting this energy from people and, you know, putting that on. On, on film, so to speak. Well, you're talking about like building that rapport and that trust. Is it harder to do that when you've got a big team? And obviously there's loads of different people kind of interacting with both you and the subject. And there's lots of sort of commotion around the studio or the location where you're working. Is it hard to then build up that that trust and that rapport between you and the subject? Or is it something that you just, you will find a way to do? I just find a way to do it. It, it doesn't matter if it's one person or, you know, like uh, for guests, for, for my guest campaigns, you know, I just have 25, 30 people on set. And, you know, we, you know, we have to have 30 looks a day sometimes for a campaign. And it's in the middle of nowhere in the hot sun. And, you know, out of those 30 looks, you're changing locations probably 15 times. And you just got to keep the flow going. You got to keep the energy going. And um, at some point, if you see them start to, to veer off, you need to pull them aside and say, hey, look at me. Relax. We got to do this. This looks amazing. Just focus on me. Don't worry about that guy behind you that's holding a light for your butt. You know, your butt's there or whatever. Like that. So, you know, you just, it, it all depends on the situation and the person. It, it just, it comes down to really understanding who you're shooting and what their, what their limits are and what they're capable of. So you said that the nerves have the nerves aren't there anymore. You just turn up on set, you do your job, and you find a way through any problems that you might have. If the nerves are, are, are gone, how about the motivation and, and the excitement to do your job? Do you still enjoy your job? Oh, I love it, man. It's you know, listen, you're a photographer. I mean, it's it's doing something that you love and it always constantly changes is and getting paid for it and getting paid well for it is just you know, I mean, it's the best thing you can do in the world. I mean, if you really love what you do, it's it's never a job. Of course, there's challenges for it, and there's a lot of ups and downs. But I believe they really outweigh the negatives. And uh, you know, I feel lucky uh, to do this work. And you know, I I I never feel uh, it's rare that I feel unmotivated. I really try to put 110 percent into every job that I do. Um, especially if it's, uh, you know, like I, I, you know, I, whether I'm shooting a, a large campaign for a company that's exciting to do, or I have a, a client that flies in from Ohio that saved up for a year to shoot with me. And, you know, obviously they're, they're not ever going to be, uh, you know, a big model or anything, but this is a huge deal for them. Uh, I try to put the same amount of energy and effort into them, make them feel just as special as I would in any job. And I feel like it's important. Not only for them, but for me too. So I don't lose my edge. Do you find working in sort of the entertainment industry, the fashion industry can be sometimes a little bit tiring or a little bit frustrating and you just kind of, um, I mean, obviously from the outside, it has this sort of the idea that it's kind of a little bit fake and, and, you know, perhaps people are nice to each other for the sake of progress and they use each other and so on. There's all these sort of stereotypes about especially California and and just the the general American culture of, of media. Do you ever find that you need to take a break from it to just kind of reset yourself? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think, I think one, the, uh, the key to me sort of being consistent and 
you know, not getting burned out by that is I'm constantly shooting something for myself. And, uh, I, I've done that my entire career. No matter what I have going on, I always make time to do something that I really want to do on my own. And uh, it, it it definitely balances me. Oh, good. Yeah. This is a good question. Do you know what? I, I feel like you're reading my notes because my follow up question is about personal work. So that's pretty much per- <laughs> that couldn't have been done more perfectly. I feel like I'm a little bit proud of myself, almost like I'm somehow responsible for moving this in the right direction. Your personal work, then, obviously, because you work. Uh, sort of day to day, some of the stuff that you've done is such big work for big publications and and big brands. When it comes to doing stuff for yourself, is it a small team? Is it just yourself and the model, or yourself a makeup artist and the model? And how do you go about making it different from the process of doing your your work work? Well, uh, I consider myself uh, a lifelong student of photography and art and fashion and fine art photography. You know, for me, uh, I'm constantly, uh, studying things and getting inspired by, you know, what I'm, what I'm looking at. So, you know, it's, it's exciting for me to put a small project together, whether it just be myself and makeup artist and model or, you know, me in a, in a, in a light crew or even a large crew and sort of, um, experiment or maybe just go in there and freestyle and not have any plan at all. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's important to your, your growth as a photographer and artist and, and your skill level. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, staying sharp in this business is so important because things are changing so fast. I mean, literally the way things are changing with social media and brands and, you know, being on top of it's so important. So really staying in the game is, is so important. And, um, for me, it's not work. It's, it's, you know, it's something I have to do. Well, a mistake I see from people uh, who are wanting to get into the photographic industry and be paid for it, and they are, they could be very talented photographers, uh, but the mistake I see them make is they focus so much on the camera, they focus on the technical aspects, and they focus on impressing other photographers. Whereas I think one of the most mismanaged parts of photography by people that want to take it further is to, to be um, knowledgeable and focused on your subject rather than just focused on your camera and on yourself. How do you stay sort of in touch with the fashion industry? Because like you said, it's really fast moving. Do you spend a lot of time like reading like blogs or fashion magazines or is it something where you've just got your finger on the pulse because of the people that you know around you yeah it's a little bit of both i mean yeah i, I do stay up on it whether it's through social media or or fashion mags or you know I, I follow closely people that i admire and sort of i believe in a way some of these people sort of set the set the trends and the curves uh but it's such a strange time right now because you know, something happened that we, that, that, that people I, I don't think expect to happen is that the fast fashion world and the world of Instagram sort of took over the fashion industry a little bit. You know, it, it, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's not a model that a supermodel that's, you know, that's, that's shooting the new Tom Ford ad and the Gucci ad that has all the followers. It's someone that is, uh, five, four, five, two. And has five million followers, and they're making you know half a million dollars a year posting about for brands. You know that's become the new business model, and brands have taken notice from it. And now fashion brands have popped up supporting that, like these fast fashion brands. And so the business model is changing, and. Um, um, you know, I, I really try to watch that closely. I try to keep my feet in both worlds. I, you know, my favorite thing to do is shoot, you know, commercial fashion campaign for an elevated brand. But, you know, I'm very much involved with the smaller brands that are doing huge numbers that you just can't compete with. And, you know, you just have to keep an eye on the, on the trends and the curve and where things are going. And it's, you know, it's important. And I know a lot of photographers don't do that. And I think it's really important to be aware of where this business is going. If you're going to, if you, if you plan to stay in it for a little bit longer, you know, and there's some people that do that, they do their job. Like my, a friend of mine, Tony Kelly, a very close friend of mine, you know, he's not really affected by that. He's in a different art world right now, but 
you know, most people in an upper mid level, uh, photographers, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's really important to understand how this business works nowadays because it's not the same business that it was five years ago or 10 years ago. Do you worry that the shift uh, to influencers like you're referencing is going to devalue what photographers are worth on, on the sort of commercial market? It already has. It already has. I mean, it's definitely, um, it's definitely, uh, sort of sifted through and kind of separated the men from the boys. Um, you know, the problem is, is that a lot of these influencers are, you know, they're having their boyfriends take photos for them or whatever it is. They're not professional photos, but they're, they're bright and clear and the brands don't really care. The brand about the photography, the brands care about the product placement and, you know, um, it, it's not, I don't think you consider a lot of these photos, uh, a typical fashion photo, but it's a new kind of like a new world order of fashion photos. It's a, it's a lifestyle fashion picture of an influencer, you know, and, um, it's sort of become a, a new normal for that. Um, now one thing I always say is, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of great, great photographers that are unknown that aren't considered professional that can take one or two images and be amazing and they'll post them on their social media or whatever. What separates them from the pros is being able to work on set with a crew of 30 people and executives, you know, looking at a monitor, whispering and, you know, having to, you know, having a, a quarter million dollar budget per day and having to get a certain amount of really great photo sets. And if you don't come through, and this is your last gig, because you're, you're really only as good as your last campaign in this business. So I think there's a huge difference in people, people being able to handle that pressure and, um, do a large campaign as to just do these little, you know, um, smaller posts here and there that people put on social media or even a small fashion website. I mean, I'm not someone that's. So my wheelhouse really is in portraiture more than anything else. And I'm not really looking to take it any further than kind of for my own enjoyment because I work in photography in another facet. But when it comes to working for, say you mentioned Playboy, what is the day-to-day like working for for a company like Playboy? Is it, because I imagine, you know, especially going back a few years, there would have been this idea of what it was like to be a photographer for Playboy. I'm imagining it's a lot more work than people realize. Uh, it depends. It depends on what level you're at in the company. Now they're, it's completely different. I think the magazine went out of business this last month. You know, I, I, I don't think they have a physical office anymore. Um, which is, you know, very sad to me and another subject, but, uh, you know, times have changed. When I worked for them, it was great. Uh, I worked as an independent contractor for many, many, many years and sort of just, uh, got assignments from them and, booked the assignments at my leisure. So I sort of just produced my own content. And then, you know, the Chicago office, the Beverly Hills office, you know, they send you your the FedEx, your contracts and the FedEx, the hard drives, you know, and, you know, you're constantly doing that back and forth. Um, <clears throat> so when I got to the magazine, you know, it's not like I would, uh, I didn't really have a, I didn't, I didn't have to be there every day, but, mm-hmm. um, <sighs> I guess you could say that it's, it's sort of an interesting job and it's sort of really unique and exciting because, you know, three, four days a week or two, maybe three days a week, you're testing fresh models to see if they're worthy of being a playmate. And that's a lot of fun. And then maybe once or twice a month, you're shooting a centerfold on location. So it's very exciting. I, I know, listen, the whole process of Playboy magazine was, you know, such a great experience for me and. I can't even explain how much fun it was and how much I learned. Uh, be, watching the process of a magazine being developed from, you know, me, you know, blurting out an idea at, you know, having drinks with the executives and then seeing the magazine going to print, opening the box and seeing the issue and saying, you know, Hey, I, this happened because of me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really like extremely satisfying and rewarding to have to do something like that start to finish 
What do you make of this kind of revolution that we're going through with retouching, where it's being attacked more and more on the uh, sort of in the sense of uh, body positivity and wanting to be more transparent and honest with the way that people look and things to be more realistic and less? Uh, I hate the expression, but airbrushed. Yeah. Do you think this? Do you think this is a good thing, or do you actually prefer the the older ways of retouching? Uh, I mean, like the older ways where you, you didn't know or you. you, you what do you mean by that? I guess I don't mean so much in terms of the method, but just more in the philosophy of of sort of retouching yeah. has become something that's almost like a, a taboo word. To have an image that's retouched, there's almost a, a movement of people that want nothing to be retouched. Do you think that that's going to be a positive thing moving forwards? I'm not a fan of everything not being retouched. I think there are some things that are you know just better off. You know, if, if, if you make adjustments here and there. I think mm-hmm. the over retouching, the obvious over retouching is horrible. Um, you know, but I think there's also, you know, there's also a develop, an art form has developed from it. There's some really great retouchers and photographers that are retouchers that have, that's, they've developed their style in doing that. And, you know, I guess I'm sort of one of them because, um, you know, I, obviously we try to shoot as close to reality as possible, but part of what I do and part of, you know, listen, people, it's no secret. People come to me, they know that I have a, a talent for making women look amazing. I don't care what you look like. If you're not that attractive, you know, I have, I've developed the skill in, in, in bringing out the best qualities in people just by studying you know, women for so long. And part of that has to do with the right amount of retouching and doing things that your eye doesn't notice and polishing and just Making adjustments that your eye is not catching, but it pleases your eye. So, yeah, I think there's limitations and there is, uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's funny to see, uh, some of these influencers doing. I think, I think the problem is in the influencers, really. I mean, there's, there's a definitely, there's a definite, uh, separation from reality. Um, I think, <laughs> and I don't think the problem's in the fashion media, the problem's in the, and the problems are in social media. But, um, you know, I think there should be limits to everything. I don't see promoting, uh, uh, you know, maybe someone that's severely overweight as, you know, um, as a positive thing for young girl. I, I believe in people just being healthy. And I think it's, uh, and, and it goes opposite. I don't think, you know, promoting someone being super, super skinny. You know, if, if they're doing things to make themselves that way, is, is positive either. So I, I, I believe in people looking their best on camera. And, uh, you know, if you have to polish the photo up a little bit with blemishes and, you know, a little, little imperfections here or there, I, I don't think there's any problem. You just mentioned it a minute ago that you, your sort of your key talent, I guess, would be in how you make women look in photos, your skill of making them look as good as possible without obviously pushing too far here. Because I imagine, uh, considering I'm just some guy from across the pond, you're probably not too keen to give away everything. But <laughs> what's the secret to photographing women and bringing out the best in them? I mean, you really have to look at, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I can even explain it, but you know, when I look at a photo, Right away, I see something that doesn't flow. You know, maybe it doesn't flow. Maybe it's because their arms pushed against something and it's maybe at a weird angle or something. So I just do things to correct it, you know, correct from what my eye is seeing. So, uh, I, I don't really know how to explain it, but all I can say is that when your eye looks at it, it should be completely comfortable and relaxed and nothing should be standing out like, Hey, that can't be real, you know? And that's, that, that's the goal in mind with me. I, I think I'm sure people can look at my photos and take apart and see what I've done and what I haven't done. But I think, um, part of the way I do my photos and my art is people not knowing really. <laughs> so. I mean, you're in the middle of... Okay, so to start this question, I want to point out that I've asked this to several uh, fashion, portrait, beauty photographers, and no one ever really wants to give me an answer. And I feel like I might have finally found someone that can give me an answer to this question because you 
are right down the road from from Hollywood. You're in California, which is like the cultural center of the universe for the Western world. Are there, is there any celebrities or any models or actor as uh, actors, actresses, singers, anyone like that that you'd really love to photograph? I really love that. It's such a great question, and it's so hard for me to answer. By the way, just to add to the last question, an interesting thing happened to me for the very first time ever in my career. <laughs> I shot, you know, something happened to me that had never happened before. I shot a celebrity last week for an album cover release, and I did my thing, and everybody is so happy with the images, like a thousand percent. The record label, the producers, the management, the artists, everybody. And mm-hmm. they, we, you know, it goes to a committee and, you know, these people pick out these images for retouching. So I work on it. I have a, I have a retoucher that helps me with the real difficult stuff that I'm not real good at. Um, but, um, for the first time, the artists requested that I not fix the flaws on her. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. So I actually had to reverse the things that I did to her like rounding the butt and you know some other things like that that I just felt that with the clothing that she had on it it, it was just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to shape the clothing a little bit better and and she wanted it raw. She did not want any of that altered. And it was, I found it very interesting. And I, and I sort of like was a little upset because it is my name going on it. People are going to think, well, he, if right away I'm thinking, people are going to say, well, he should have done that. But honestly, right. after thinking about it now, it's, it's fine. And I think it's great. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. So I, 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 and I didn't think I did very much at all to it, by the way, because she's, she looks phenomenal as, as it is. But, uh, I don't know, you'll see. It's it's going to be coming out soon. So, well, I, I what I wasn't going to do was I wasn't going to be Howard Stern and start asking that like demanding that you give me the name or anything stupid like that. I can't stand when people do that. When it's just like you know, it's obviously something that's going to come in time. Don't be don't be an asshole and and try and try and pull information out. All I can all I can say is if I if you see anything fresh coming out with artists, what you see is what you get. Okay, so th- let's head back to my my previous question then, because I I'm desperate for someone to give me a good answer to this. Everyone always is scared of it, and I I, I really feel like I can get a good answer out of you. So, um, ba- based in the fact that you are in California, you're right down the road from Hollywood. Celebrities or singers or actors, actresses, whatever that you would like to photograph. Are there any names you can give me? You know, the only person I really love is uh, and only because she's so good in photos and she's such a great model. She's such a great model. And I, you know, I really have, don't have a, I don't have a high desire to, to photograph celebrities. Uh, it's usually more of a pain in the ass than because you got to deal, you got to deal with a hundred people around them. And everyone has their own opinion of what, you know, they think you should be doing. So it's not, sometimes it's, it's a great job and sometimes it's not ideal. I, you know, I have friends that are huge photographers. And, you know, we talk shop and, you know, it's, it's a freaking nightmare sometimes. But with that being said, I think that Charlize Theron is such a phenomenal model. She's such a phenomenal model and so underrated as a model, let alone, I know she's a great actress, but man, what an amazing model. And, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look up photos of her from Merton Marcus. They're absolutely amazing. And she's, outstanding in those pictures but yeah i offhand i would probably say surely do you think that the the art of modeling is is disappearing because it's more and more becoming a game of just a a celebrity as opposed to someone that's worked their way up as a model and sort of learned their skills so you're getting a lot of people that are either famous by i'm trying to be as polite as possible here because generally with an English accent, it sounds worse, but people yeah. that are just kind of famous by association or they're famous by name, but they haven't maybe got any talent to go with it. You know, th- they maybe aren't the best people to put in front of a camera, but that's the call because they're a celebrity. Lots of people want pictures yeah. of them. Yeah, Do you that's think that's not- kind of killing? Is it killing the art of modeling a little bit? I don't know if it's killing it, but it's definitely taking away from 
the jobs uh, of the models, you know, because uh, now a lot of big brands are focusing on using celebrity as their advertisement, their faces. So, you know, the days of the model you see in a lot of, yeah, I, 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 the unknown model in these big high fashion campaigns is not as, uh, it's not as common anymore. Um, you know, you open up, say you take a bug, open up the first, the first hundred pages are, are ads, you know, the yeah. first hundred, if it's maybe more first hundred pages, I would say 75% of those pictures are probably celebrity driven and yeah. celebrity, they're ads of celebrities. And, you know, the other ones are, are, um, you know, um, less, um, Lesser known brands, but maybe they're bigger in Europe and not in the States. They're using European models, you know, so it's, it's definitely, definitely changed. Um, the celebrity, the celebrities have taken a lot of the, a lot of the jobs for, you know, the working model that's just out there hustling and going to castings and, you know, trying to get these big fashion campaigns. We're about to wrap up. I just obviously want to say a massive thank you for you taking the time to do this. It's always a pleasure to talk to someone, especially with as much experience and, and such a great portfolio of work. My last question for you, though, is that on your website, you mentioned that you would probably never retire. And I just wanted to know why. Uh, well, like I mentioned earlier, you know, it, it, it's uh, if you love what you do, it's not really a job. So, <laughs> you know, I, I don't see myself ever getting sick of doing this job. So, you know, I'll, I'll probably always shoot as long as I can, as long as I'm able to. And uh, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. So, uh, you know, I mean, listen, does an artist or someone that, you know, uh, a painter or a writer, you know, do they ever really retire? Are they always thinking about doing something, a project of some sort? I think so. So, you know, when I say that, it's sort of what I mean. Amazing. Thank you so much. So there is a, a bit of an ironic joke going with this podcast at the moment, purely because of the fact that I've been interviewing people remotely. Um, I've been able to talk to people that are massively out of my stratosphere. And it's ironic for me to even attempt to bring them attention because I'm such a small fish and I'm in their pond, so to speak. But what I always like to do is finish these with uh, letting people know where they can find your work, where they can go and see your images and so on. So what's your social media and your website? Yeah, it's um, it's uh, my social media is uh, well, my Instagram is Josh Ryan Photos. Um, my website's joshryanphoto.com, and uh, I just launched a new online mag called Cherries Mag. So it's um, cherriesmag.com, which is sort of fun. New little projects I'm doing, and then once we get back and uh, have some normalcy and able to get together again, I'll be uh, resuming my workshops. That um, you know that I had planned. We had one planned right before the pandemic, and so we postponed it. But I've had these amazing photo workshops with people who are really want to get some type of a, a real a different experience out of a out of a photo workshop. So JoshRyanPhotoWorkshop dot com is the website. But all that stuff is available if you just type my name in the old interweb, and uh, most of it usually pops up. Amazing! Thank you so much for taking the time to do this. No problem, man. My pleasure.